Here is your start set guide to every wide receiver in every matchup of week 9. If you want to have a statistical advantage over all of your league mates for the entirety of the season, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you want some good luck for fantasy football. But I don't waste time, we're going to get right into it with the S tier with CeeDee Lamb. Coming off a pretty big game last week with 2 touchdowns, 146 yards, and 17 targets. Now getting an even more positive matchup here against the Falcons, which should be pass first, and no shortage of passing offense for both of these teams. Following that with Justin Jefferson, AJ Brown, and Jamar Chase with Amon Ra, Regardless, we're going to be starting those guys, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. Dropping it down to the A tier, we're going to start with Tyreek Hill. 13 fantasy points last week, a bit of a down week for what we expected, but Tua hasn't played football in about a month, so you really can't hold that against him. Now he gets a good matchup against the Bills, which one, allow a lot of points to wide receivers, and two, are a really good offense, so you have to expect that Tua and this Dolphins team is going to pass a ton to keep up with the offensive efficiency. We're following that with Puka Nakua, Chris Olave, and Malik Neighbors. Puka played 57% of the snaps last week, still had over 100 yards and 9 targets. That's a 41% team target share on the routes that he did run. Now that number definitely has to come down, but it shows the upside, and no matter what, these elite wide receivers are going to get theirs in a matchup that should be offensive focused again against the Seahawks. Following that with Olave, he gets a matchup against the Panthers, which is one of the most positive to every position. Top three in quarterback points, wide receiver points, running back points, and now we're expected to have Derek Carr in this matchup. It's going to give him that much more upside, especially because we don't have Rashid Shahid in this offense anymore, and there really is no number two option. Neighbors does take a bit of a hit without Andrew Thomas. The offensive line is giving less time to Daniel Jones to pass. We talked about that in previous videos. He still is a must start, though. He has a ton of upside and has been pretty good in a lackluster offense. Now he gets a repeat matchup against the Commanders, who he had a career game against in Week 2. He put up 127 yards, 18 targets, and a touchdown. By far his most usage in a game. Next, Drake London and DK Metcalf. London is coming off a game which was his worst since Week 1. But that means nothing because it's a week to week variance. He's the wide receiver 11 in targets per game, wide receiver 3 in red zone targets, and has a 26% team target share on the year. In a high scoring matchup against the Cowboys, which should be pass first for both teams, it's going to be a good spot for him. DK, if healthy, is going to be a start, even if it is a tougher matchup against the Rams secondary. At the time of this recording, I am recording it early. DK Metcalf is still questionable. If that changes, I'll make my updates in the comments and let you guys know. But the Seahawks, their first in pass attempts, which has allowed DK Metcalf to be the wide receiver one overall in routes run per game and the wide receiver three in total air yards. Dropping it down to the B tier, we're going to have Devonta Smith, Josh Downs, and Zay Flowers. Smith it gets a great matchup against the Jaguars defense here, who are allowing the number one most points to opposing slot wide receivers. They are very positive to everywhere on the offense. The good news is this offense is going to be a bit more pass heavy. Jalen Hurts has had his two lowest pass volume games over the last two weeks. You can't expect that to continue. And now we have Josh Downs getting a huge bump with Joe Flacco in this offense. With Joe Flacco in the three games that he started, Downs is averaging over 10 targets a game and two touchdowns in his three games. So there's a ton of upside here, which is why he's moving up this much. Flowers does get a spot here, which some people call worrisome with Deontay Johnson coming into this offense. But like DeAndre Hopkins, like Amari Cooper, in your first game, it's going to take a little bit of time to get up to that full snap share. He's not going to play a full amount of snaps this week. I don't expect that. But it is a very tough matchup against Patrick Sertan and the Broncos. If you've been around this page for long enough, you already know how bad that is. So he's a little bit more risky. We're following that with Cooper Cup and Terry McLaurin. Cup didn't look the most explosive last week, but still only played 50% of the snaps and had eight targets a 30% team target share. Those are great numbers as well. As he plays more snaps, his numbers are going to be a lot more solid. And then we're going to have Terry McLaurin, who gets a good matchup against the Giants here. With a healthy Daniel Jones, Terry is a start regardless. He's the wide receiver 5 in air yards, wide receiver 11 in end zone targets per game, and wide receiver 12 in yards per route run. Those numbers show you he has a ton of upside and big play potential, which we know to be his play style. Following with the C tier here, we're going to be moving down with DJ Moore, T. Higgins, and Marvin Harrison Jr., with Moore, he's been pretty up and down, but the consistency is more of a Caleb Williams issue. When you're top 10 in uncatchable air yards thrown per game, you're going to hinder the upside of your wide receivers. He does get a positive matchup here against the Cardinals, though, who allow the 8th most points to wide receivers and 28 fancy points per game to that position, so it should be a positive spot. With T. Higgins, another guy that is questionable at the time of this recording, again, I'm recording early, so if anything changes, I will update it in the comments. If he does play, he will dominate against the Raiders, though. A very, very positive matchup to the wide receiver position. And he has been out targeting Jamar Chase. When you're the wide receiver two, really a wide receiver one on any team, and you get the number two coverage of every defense, you're going to be eating, which is why T. Higgins has been so good. Followed by Marvin Harrison, again, who has been up and down, but he found some success last week in the underneath crossing route game. If the coaching staff can understand that and give him more of those instead of just straight vertical routes, he has a great percentage of separation on those. 
but it's harder when you don't have as much time in the pocket with Kyler Murray. It is a tougher matchup this week against the Bears, so you're going to hope that the coaching staff can run him on more of those short routes and get him a higher floor. We just don't know what to expect. So this is why he is ranked where he is. Followed that with Jaden Reed, Myers, and Brian Thomas Jr. Jaden Reed is 100% dependent on the health of Jordan Love. If Love is healthy, I might move him up even here a little bit. If he's not, I'm definitely moving down Jaden Reed a good amount. This video is recorded early, so we will see what happens with Jordan Love. But with Myers, he has quietly been one of the best wide receivers as far as underlying numbers go. The offense isn't great, but he's playing the Bengals who are allowing some of the most points to wide receivers and good success overall to that position. Fire him up as well as Brian Thomas Jr. They're dealing with a bunch of injuries. He himself is dealing with injury. If we don't have Gabe Davis, we're obviously not having Christian Kirk. He is a must start regardless of who he plays against. He is dealing with a little bit of injury though, so monitor that. But depending on that, the Jaguars could be in a huge hole this week against the Eagles and have to pass a ton. So the passing volume is going to be there for Brian Thomas Jr. And what I'd like to start him in, just be aware of that injury. But we're going to be dropping it down another tier to the D tier with Michael Pittman, Jalen Waddle, and Cortland Sutton. Like Josh Downs, Pittman also gets a boost with Joe Flacco in this offense. The floor for the slot wide receiver, which is Pittman, is definitely going to be there. With Flacco, he's averaging 13 fantasy points and 7.3 targets per game playing against the Vikings this week, which is a solid option. Waddle should get more opportunity in this matchup against the Bills, which they have a really, really good offense, so the Dolphins are probably going to have to keep up with that. Jalen Waddle isn't necessarily a huge target guy, but he doesn't need to be that to be fantasy viable. Tua, his second game back, should improve a good amount. Corlin Sutton should probably be boosted up a little bit more in these rankings than what he is. He's averaging a 22% team target share, despite that game where he had zero targets but played the whole time. Last week, he comes out for 100 receiving yards and 11 targets. Now facing a very, very positive Ravens secondary who are allowing some of the most points and fantasy success to wide receivers. So you're definitely putting him at your flex if you have him. Followed by Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, and Ladd McConkie. All similar, tied up in this tier. With Calvin Ridley, when we don't have DeAndre Hopkins, and if we have Mason Rudolph in this offense, it does project him to have a good amount of points this week. So he is a little bit more risky, but in this matchup against the Patriots defense, which hasn't necessarily been amazing in stopping wide receivers or really anybody, this could be a spot where you can take that risk. Amari Cooper will continue to increase his snap share. The Bills didn't sign him to play 50% of the snaps. He played 30% in week one, 50% in week two. I expect that to be more around 70 to 80 plus. Again, it's a little bit more risky just because we don't exactly know what he's going to see. But when he does see that snap share, he is going to be very, very viable in fantasy football. But it is a pretty tough matchup against the Miami secondary who are allowing some of the least points to wide receivers this year. Similarly with Ladd, he is leading the Chargers in every single receiving stat. And now he gets a matchup against the Browns, which are a little bit more positive to slot wide receivers than you would expect on the year. So it's not necessarily all bad. Following that in the E tier, we're going to have Cedric Tillman, DeAndre Hopkins, and Darno Mooney. Tillman has been on a tear recently. We can't lie about that. But the question is, can we trust Jameis Winston every single week? The passing volume 100% is going to be there. Is the efficiency going to be good enough? Coming into a matchup here against the Chargers, which are one of the most negative in points allowed to wide receivers this week, we still have Jerry Judy and Elijah Moore both seeing a good amount of targets and honestly all wide receiver ones in this offense in the sense that there's no true wide receiver one emerging himself yet. It looks to be Cedric Tillman, but in a tough matchup and what we really don't know to expect with Jameis Winston He's moving down the rankings a little bit, which is why he's ranked where he is here. With DeAndre Hopkins, this is a guy that hasn't been great because he hasn't seen the snap share pretty much all season. That will come as the year goes on. He gets an amazing matchup against the Buccaneers, which are top five in points allowed to wide receivers. So if he can increase his snaps and be on the field a good amount of times, he's going to be fine this week, but that is a really big question mark. With Darnell Mooney, he gets the plus of Kirk Cousins distributing the ball to everybody, but that's probably not going to continue here in a matchup against the Cowboys, which when you have Drake London and Kyle Pitts both averaging over a 20% target share and Bijan Robinson almost at that point, you're going to have a little bit of a week-to-week -week risk. Following that with JSN and Romeo Dubs, both of these guys depend on injury. If DK's injured, JSN's moving up these rankings a ton. With Jordan Love, it, Romeo Dubs is going to stay here if we have Malik Willis, probably even move down. But if Jordan Love is playing, fire up Romeo Dubs. It's a great, great positive matchup. We want to be taking our spots there where we can. And then I'll have Keon Coleman and Shakir tied up here. They have had really, really good underlying numbers. With Amari Cooper in this offense, it's going to lower their snap percentage a little bit. They shouldn't really see that different of a usage percentage, though, because their numbers have been so good. Following that with the Keenan Allen and Jordan Addison train here, both of these guys have been underperforming this year. Unless we see something different, we don't really need to be starting them. In the F tier, we have Xavier Worthy. He's been seeing the volume, again, just hasn't really been putting up the numbers you'd hope. He's been doing decent, but with the volume he's seeing, you'd expect him to do a lot better. Christian Watson, again, he may move up if Jordan Love plays. If not, I really don't want to trust it. He is touchdown or bust at this point. Followed by Jalen McMillan, who again has been seeing the volume. 
gets a pretty decent matchup this week. He's seen 15 targets in the last two. Baker Mayfield did miss him on two big plays, so I can't really take that away from him. Xavier Leggett at this point is the wide receiver one. I don't know if we can call him that because we do have Adam Thielen coming back and Jalen Coker has been pretty good this year, but it is a pretty tough matchup here, so I don't necessarily want to be throwing him into our starting lineups, especially with Bryce Young at quarterback. Following that with a G tier, we're going to have Roma Dunze, Jerry Judy, and Elijah Moore, Wanda Robinson, Thielen, and Coker, which we just talked about. That is going to finish off these wide receiver tiers. I wish you luck and fancy this weekend. I will see you on Monday for the waiver wire ads. We do not want to be missing.